Well, g'day, Ribs fam. I hope you're well. Uh, I wanted to do a special Easter message. I know that normally we we wouldn't be having ribs by now, and we'd be all we'd be all finished for the term. But things are a bit different, and so I wanted to record a special message just for our Easter uh, to get us thinking about what Easter is all about. So I wonder for you. Have you ever thought about revenge? Have you ever had that moment uh, in your life where someone has wronged you in such a way that you just wanted to get back at them, that, that you wanted to settle the score, to, to make things right? It's, it's, a, it's a hard thing, isn't it, wanting revenge? Uh, because what really happens with revenge with that emotion, with that feeling, with that desire inside us, is that that person is still winning. That person has something over us, don't they? <clears throat> well, as I've as I've been sharing on on our ribs Instagram page, uh, there's this verse that I think is going to be really critical. Uh, as we think about uh, Easter and Jesus and all that's uh, that's wrapped up in Easter. And this verse comes from Matthew chapter 5, which is part uh, of the Sermon on the Mount, which is something we looked at last year, actually. And so the Sermon on the Mount is Jesus laying out what his kingdom will look like. And so there's this bit, Matthew chapter 5, verses 38 and following. It says this, You've heard that it was said, eye for an eye and tooth for a tooth. But I tell you, do not resist an evil person. If someone strikes you on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. And if someone wants to sue you and take your tunic, let him have your cloak as well. If someone forces you to go one mile, go with him two miles. Give to the one who asks you, and do not turn away from the one who wants to borrow from you. Well, I wonder... What... what? How do these words hit home for you? I mentioned at the start that, that maybe uh, in your life you've wanted revenge. How do these words hit that spot, hit that feeling, hit that desire to want to do something back to someone who's wronged you? If someone strikes you on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. That's definitely not what our world tells us to do, do they? They say... Make it right. Make it better. Fix it by getting one back on that other person. But that's not what Jesus says at all, is it? Turn to him the other cheek also. What right does Jesus have to say this? You know, there's, there's often people in our lives who, who try and tell us how things should be or how we should do things. How the heck... Could Jesus tell us to do this? What, what experience does he have in, in revenge, in, in people wronging him unjustly of, of, of things going not, not the way that he wanted them to go? What? What's, it's easy to think like that sometimes, isn't it? As we see things that Jesus says and we go, Oh, but, but you are God. You, you've never had things happen to you. Well, how did Jesus die? Did, did he deserve that? A man who did no wrong. A, a, a man who was perfect. And he's led before this court who are filled with people. It's, it's, it's a rigged court. It's rigged. Uh, the, the people who are there all want him dead. There is no one on his side that, that is present that day. And the decision is made because of all these people yelling, not because of justice, not because of what is right, but just what they've decided. What right does Jesus have to say these things? To say, if someone strikes you on the right cheek, turn to him the other also? Well, he's maybe the only person in the world that's ever existed that has the right to say this. Someone who has done no wrong and has had wrong done to him. Jesus knows, though, something we don't. Or, or we might know, but, but we often forget. And it's a simple truth. 
when we forgive those who do wrong against us, when we do turn the other cheek as well, it's actually liberating. It's actually really freeing. Uh, There are people in my life who have done uh, incredible wrongs, uh, who... Who've, who've made my life really hard, who it would have been very easy uh, to desire and long for harm to come to them. And there may have been times, if I be honest, I, th- I thought about doing that myself, where I wanted revenge, I wanted to, to reap justice on them. <clears throat> What Jesus says here, really, it's, it's, it's simple, but it's really hard. How, but, but how, how we know it's, it's real and it's good and it's, it's, it's from someone who, who knows their stuff is because he went through all those things. And so if you've got the, your Bible there with you, you can, you can turn with me to Mark chapter 10, verse 45. Now, was the other verse that I posted on Instagram a few days ago. Mark chapter 10, verse 45. And this is another one you can highlight. You might want to underline or, or scribble down, have it on your wall. This, this is a great memory verse. <coughs> it says, For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. We know, don't we, that, that Jesus is that Son of Man. He, he's the King. He's the one who deserves all the glory, all the honour, everything that you could ever imagine, all the praise and, and everything, everything that we could give Him. And yet, what does it say? He did not come to be served, but to serve, and give His life as a ransom for many. Jesus, with with all that's done wrong to him, with with all the injustice, he could have easily shot lightning out of his fingers and and corrected all the wrongs done to him. He could have gotten his revenge and then some more and more and more. But what does he do? He gives his life as a ransom for many. And that's really the gospel, the gospel story you might have been floating around ribs for a while. You might have been floating around Christian friends or, or Christianity itself for a while and church and those kind of things. And, and, and maybe you've, you've heard this word, the gospel, and you don't really get what it is. Well, the gospel is really simple. It's that we can't love God perfectly. We can't and we don't. But Jesus came to die for us in our place as a ransom to pay for our sins and he's raised again on the third day. He's killed on the Friday and he's raised on the Sunday as he conquers sin and death once for all and he offers to us to follow him. And if we choose to follow him, he he grants and he promises eternal life. And it's a new life now as well, isn't it? Because just like we were talking about revenge, when, when we... When we forgive someone instead of take revenge, we're liberated. It's, it's free. And that's the same with our sin in regards to God. When we are forgiven, we are liberated. We are set free. And we can finally be the people that we are meant to be in Christ, in God. So the gospel is very simple. Follow Jesus and trust in him. Sometimes the Christian message can get a bit complex. And so there's kind of these two elements, isn't there? That the gospel, the, the truth of Christianity is both complex and simple because the more we dig down, the, the, the more complex it gets. But at the very beginning, at the very start, at the very heart of the gospel of Christianity is the simple truth to follow Jesus, to trust in him and to put him first. Easter 
is a great time for us to remember the gospel because that's really the heart of Christianity. Jesus' death as he pays for our sin and his resurrection as he conquers it once and for all. The cross at Easter shows us just how humble and amazing and loving God is to us. <clears throat> There's a memory verse that uh, I hope I hope you'll tune in on Sunday, and it's it's in our family spot on Sunday, and and the verse is from one Corinthians chapter six verse fourteen, and it says, "God raised us up with Jesus, and God will raise us up by His power." It's a great memory verse as we remember just what God offers us if we trust in Jesus and follow him he'll raise us up just like he has done with Jesus we can know that it's that's a true and a real and a sure promise because we've seen it done already in Jesus sometimes it, uh, we can lose the simplicity and the beauty of the Christian message, the, the gospel, the, the heart of Christianity. We can get bogged down in, in all these other bits and pieces. We can get distracted. Maybe for you this Easter, it's a real chance to, co- to commit to Jesus, to put him first, to follow him for real. To have him as number one. Knowing that he's died for you. He's paid for your sin. And he's conquered death and sin forever. So that you can have new life with God. Never forget Mark 10, 45. The son of man did not come to be served. But to serve. And to give his life as a ransom for many. Friends, wherever we're out with Jesus, I pray that you would come before him honestly and aim to follow him and love him all the days of your life. I'm going to pray that that would be the case. Would you pray with me? Dear God, thanks that you are good, you are big, you are awesome. Thanks that you love humanity. Thanks that you love humans so much. You haven't just given us the whole world. You've done everything so we can know you, love you, and serve you. Thanks for Jesus. And thanks for Easter, where we get to remember the fact that you've died for us, that Jesus died for our sin. He has paid for our sin when when we don't follow you as we should. And he's beaten sin and death. He isn't just paid for it, he's destroyed it. And we can have new life in him now and forever. (coughs) Help us to know, trust, and love you all the days of our lives. Amen.